So here we are asked to determine the x component of the electrostatic force on particle 2 due to particle 1. There certainly is an electrostatic force because both of these particles bear positive charge and as a result they're going to exert a repulsive force on one another. So for example particle 1 is going to exert a repulsive force on particle 2 and the direction of that force would be sort of this way. What you want to do is extend a line from 1 to 2 like that and then the repulsive force will follow the extent of that line. Now of course particle 1 also experiences a repulsive force but the question is not asking us anything about that particular repulsive force. They want the x component of the repulsive force on particle 2. Now we've learned in this chapter that when you have two positively charged particles in close proximity to one another the force that they exert on one another is governed by Coulomb's law which is expressed right here. And so one of the things that we're going to need to figure out in using Coulomb's law is the distance between the two charges, this r. So that would be this distance right here. We might make it our goal first to figure out that distance. Now we certainly have a right triangle formed by d1, d2, and then that distance r. So the Pythagorean theorem would certainly apply here. So let's go ahead and find that distance. We would have r squared is equal to d1 squared plus d2 squared. Nice and easy. We'll plug in the values for d1 and d2. We can see that d1 is 2 millimeters. And then d2 is 6 millimeters. So cleaning up the right hand side, we're going to have 2 squared plus 6 squared, which is going to turn out to be 40. This will be millimeters squared. And then if you take the square root of both sides, we see that r is equal to the square root of 40 millimeters. So that's good. We're going to be using that value shortly. The next thing we want to do is come down and magnify the picture a little bit here. And remember that this force that particle 1 is exerting on particle 2 is repulsive. So that means, again, that it's pushing particle 2 this way. And the question only wants us to figure out the x component. So what you next would want to do is draw in the x component. You could also draw the y component as well. So the x component would project to the right and then the y component would project downward. Now in order for us to figure out this x component which we might highlight right here, what we will also need to figure out is the cosine of this angle right here. Let's talk about why we need to find the cosine for a moment. So we form a right triangle here and we certainly have a hypotenuse. That hypotenuse is going to be the electrostatic force and then the x component we might label that F subscript x. Now looking at this right triangle and that angle there that we've drawn, we can see hopefully that the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent side which would be the x component divided by the hypotenuse. If we multiply both sides of this equation by f, so they cancel out on the right hand side, we could then see that the x component would equal the electrostatic force times the cosine of that angle. So again, it does become important to find the cosine of that angle. Why don't we just do that now? That angle that we've drawn within the triangle is the same as this angle right here. And so if we look at this triangle, we know some values here. Remember D2 had a value of 6 millimeters. And then the hypotenuse we figured out earlier was the square root of 40 millimeters. So now looking at that green triangle here, and then trying to calculate the cosine of this theta right there, we would see that the cosine of that theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is 6 millimeters, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 40 millimeters. Now here the millimeters would cancel, and we can see that the cosine of theta actually equals 6 over the square root of 40. So this is a result that we're going to end up needing for the x component over here. We're going to need that cos theta. Finally, our goal will be to find the electrostatic force, F. And again, that's governed by Coulomb's law. So let's come back up here and calculate the electrostatic force, F, using Coulomb's law. We can see that to do that, we have this 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon. That turns out to also equal a constant that they usually call K, which has this value right here. So here we go, the electrostatic force. 
f is equal to the k value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. And then this is going to be in this weird unit of Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And then multiply that by q1. Now q1 was stated in the question to be positive 4e. It said positive 4e. Now when you see 4e, what you need to do is take the 4 and then multiply that by the value of e. e has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And then similarly, q2 was positive 6e. So you're going to have to do 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And then you're going to divide that all by r squared. Notice over here that r squared just equaled 40 millimeters squared, though what we're going to have to do is convert that into the standard unit of meters. And so this could get a little dicey, but we can go ahead and make that conversion. So we have 40, this is millimeters squared. To get that into meters squared, what we'll do is a little conversion factor here. We all know that one meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters. But because we're trying to convert millimeters squared, we would have to square this conversion factor right here. And by doing that, these millimeters squared will ultimately cancel with those millimeters squared as well. So don't forget to square this conversion factor. This is the expression that we need for the electrostatic force. And before we compute it, why don't we copy and paste it down below. So there it is. But remember, we only needed the x component. So the x component, fx, was equal to that electrostatic force times the cosine of theta. So the final setup would look something like this. We're going to have fx equals this f expression, and then times the cosine of theta. But remember, right up here, the cosine of theta was 6 over the square root of 40. There's the setup. That's going to give us the answer. Let's go ahead and compute that. And when we punch that very carefully into our calculators, we see that the x component of the electrostatic force on that particle is equal to roughly 1.31 times 10 to the negative 22. This will turn out to be in Newtons. This is the correct answer to the question. Notice it is a positive because if you go back up and look at the diagram, the x component right there of that electrostatic force is pointing to the right, which is classically the positive x direction. So your component should indeed be positive. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no worries. I always appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos regardless.